Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news in review for January 5th, 2020. It's going to be really hard to say all that right all the time, getting used to a new year. First news of the year. So let's get right into it. Lots of great stuff coming up. So the first thing I want to talk about is this Iron Trans, the IVV01 Star Blade. What's their take on a Star Saber? Now you can pre-order this, it shows you right now. And the thing that kind of held me up from getting another Star Saber or getting a Star Saber is the size and the quality. And I think this Iron Trans might actually have what I'm looking for. So I think this thing looks really good. And it is almost 14 inches tall and it has die cast metal and plastic and it is just it well it looks great i mean you can see the pictures here i think it's highly articulated um i, I just really think this is if i wanted a star saber this would be it and you know he's he's got some accessories a big big old sword i mean surfing on a sword i don't really know what's going on this i don't know this is cool though but Let's go ahead and see what else is out there with Star Saber. So right now I'm kind of looking at there's sort of three major options that are transformable. And I think there's a couple of other ones out there that are non-transformable. But the, the ones that I see that are available to order or pre-order or are on the market. So on the left you have this Iron Trans one. In the middle you have Planet X and on the right you have Takara's. And if you look at all of them, they all look like good options. Uh, I did feel like Takara's was a little uh, underwhelming when it came to paint and presentation. It just, it really did look like just a toy, like a mainline toy versus uh, a higher end collectible. And if you're looking at the Planet X, that one looks amazing, but it looks very, it's short. I don't have exact, I couldn't find the exact height on that thing. But I know that I looked around the internet, saw some pictures, and it seems just around the same size as like a MP10, maybe slightly taller. But then the correct size would be more like the 14 inches that you see with this Iron Trans. And he's going to get a Victory Leo and all that stuff down the road. Theoretically, maybe a Death Source to match it one year. Who knows? And for those of you interested in this Minerva, it looks like it does have a... A date now so this thing should be around $60 and it's going to have uh, a May release this year so for all y'all that are in on this fans hobby Athena uh, yeah it looks like we'll have it in May so that's still a few months away so there's the MMC Beast Wars Ravage and it's sort of a masterpiece scale type figure and he looks really cool it comes with some upgrade parts also for uh, for, for their Megatron and it looks good in both modes and I do want to talk about the fact that this thing's coming out and I actually was kind of expecting a different one <laughs> so uh, but yeah the Beast Wars one looks good he looks great he's like 80 80 bucks or something like that maybe 84 bucks uh, I think this is a really cool picture uh, look how cat like this guy really is but look what else is supposed to be cat like their tuned version supposed to be coming out. I think people have gotten it from a couple of places, but most places don't even have it at pre-order. I looked all around. I couldn't find it at most of the places that I, I go to, and they don't have it for pre-order, so I don't know what's going on, why there's only a one or two places, and they're always charging like 80 bucks, so uh, the only places out there that have it. Planet Steel Express has it, and uh, there was one other place that I saw that had it, I think, but anyway... I think it looks really cool. It's super tuned, and I know that everybody's been wanting this, whether they get the first edition or, or, or this one. People have been looking forward to a reissue of this for a while, and it is a great figure. So I actually read uh, an article about this Lemon Tree ship. Uh, Galvatron's ship in the 1986 movie, and one thing I read said it was non-transformable, and then the information I got from Show Z said it was transformable. So I added that and edited that in later last week. But this week we got pictures of this guy and this is what he looks like. Uh, he is transformable. So that's a good thing getting to see that he turns into a shockwave. And 
that's that's pretty cool. That's actually a pretty decent looking shockwave. I mean, it's not the best looking shockwave in the world because obviously they have to, uh, well, it, it turns into a ship, huh, submarine mode. But there's the ship, there's the submarine mode yourself if you want to check it out. Oh, it would be cool if that could be used as a gun, but I think it's a nice looking ship. I think it's just something a little bit different, a little outside the box, and it is going to be big. It says it, it says it's eight inches tall, which would, if you look at that and flip it around, puts it at like 20 inches long or something. That's crazy long. That's crazy big. Masterpiece scale, I believe. So when I give people a heads up on a deal, and a lot of people actually gave me the heads up too on this deal, the DX9 uh, Omega Supreme, the Gabriel, that was 180 bucks if you got it from BBTS. Turns out they're sold out now. So if you don't jump on those deals right away, like if it sounds like, well, that's a bit too good to be true. Guess what? When they're too good to be true, they don't last long. And that's just the gut feeling when I first saw that price was, I wonder if it would even make it till my news segment. <laughs> But uh, it sold out a few days ago, a day or two ago maybe. But this thing was a great deal and I, I don't know. If you catch deals like this for uh, just ridiculously low, $100 less than retail whatever, man, pass this on to me. I'll, I'd pass it on to everybody else. Great way to help the community out. So I don't know how many of you guys know about the Banana Force and what they're making with this Optimus Prime and... Uh, well, I think, is, is this already? They're making this, it's going to be like a Nemesis type Prime. And so this is something that's come out. There's really no information, just a picture and it's coming, which the Banana Force one looks really solid. It looks really good and it's made of, it's got some die cast in it. It's got a lot of great paint. So this company is actually gonna come out, gonna rival Flames Toys. So there's more pictures of what's going to be the next masterpiece out now that we've gotten pretty much the last one of 19 we've got to look at what's the first one we're going to get in 2020 and that's going to be this mp48 leo convoy and they're showing it next to a takara encore uh anime big convoy so this is a reissue of a beast wars figure so to me i think it's a straight up reissue so i've never had this figure but uh size wise i mean i guess they size up pretty well and that looks pretty interesting that you got the masterpiece next to what I, whatever you call the original Beast Wars, G1 Beast Wars. And so side by side, they definitely look like they match. But personally, I'm curious as to what Takara's official next project or projects are. I really want to hear what Takara has in store for us next. Uh, just curious what's on their plate. What are they going to put out next? I really would kind of hope that they give us some sort of guidance soon, sometime this year. It'd be interesting because it seems like once they announce it, then they kind of have a release date, and it's usually about a year after they announce it that these things start to arrive. So it'd be really interesting to see what they've got out there. Also, whenever they announce a figure, generally third party lays off. I know Prime was the Optimus Prime War thing, but whenever they, let's say they say Starscream, nobody else was a Starscream out of Blaster. Nobody else was a blaster out, so just curious what else is on their list. So we have this Toy Lab. It's another company making a, a masterpiece scaled Bumblebee movie, Optimus Prime. And the funny thing about this is I think that we're up to like six different companies making them. But I didn't keep track of the height and the scales of all of these things. I didn't really pay as close of attention as I should have as each one of these coming up, which one's masterpiece. So some of the like six or seven that have been announced uh, that actually transform are masterpiece and some are more of a chug scale. So, but yeah, this one does transform. Truck mode looks right on. It, these all look pretty good. It's gonna be really hard for someone to pick which one to go with. So I, I kind of think this is gonna be one of those review frenzy kind of things. Which one is the best? And it's something that might be looking back on this like two years from now and going, oh yeah, yeah, that Toy Lab one was the best after all. Cause like, who really knows? I've just got a little bit of stuff to talk about, just a little small bit of stuff to talk about Legends. So this is Iron Factory and it's their Cliff Jumper, their uh, Army of One. So this thing's shipping now. So if you 
uh, or pre-ordered it somewhere, should be getting your pre-order notices and getting it coming in. And I think he looks pretty cool. He's definitely right in line with your Iron Factory figures that are out there. And if you're in need of a cliff jumper, this guy is coming in stock. Shows he has their McCoy, their New Age Ironhide on sale right now for like right at 30 bucks, which is like 10% off. But I'm going to pick this guy up because I think he looks pretty good. And New Age seems to be killing it with almost every release these days. Magic Square right along the same. But it looks like New Age has a little bit better uh, paint. So I'm checking them out these days. Now Magic Square is making their Gold Optimus Prime in the Legends scale. And here's the thing. I always thought that if you make a gold Optimus Prime or a gold figure, you're retiring that mold. I thought that was the sort of the Transformer tradition. Now, I know it really didn't happen with MP10 unless they just made all those other ones, like those other seven different versions already, and then the gold one comes out. But whatever. It's interesting that that was kind of the whole thought process behind the gold and the golden lagoon one but who knows maybe this is just one in a hundred that they're making of different versions but i think it looks pretty cool i do kind of like the whole gold look but the reality of it is like it if you get a gold optimus prime you need a couple of other gold figures to go with that. i don't know how many people just want to have a gold optimus prime by itself so it kind of makes me think they'll probably do when they get their megatron do a gold megatron and then of course the actual Gold Lagoon figures, all of them, could be done down the road. Who knows? Probably all depends on how well this sells. Because obviously if the flagship figure doesn't sell, why would they do more, right? And there is the box. So, hey, who knows? Is it getting retired? Is this ball getting retired? Or is this one in many? So, out with the old, in with the new. When it comes to Walmart and their reissues. The Walmart reissue, Soundwave, and the cassettes, depending on what Walmart you go to and where you live, well, some of them are going on sale. They're marked down the sound waves to 30, the t cassettes to like 11. I know I got a couple extra of the cassettes because I really, really, really like the cassettes. So I was really happy to see that. But out of, I don't know, six or seven Walmarts I went to in one day on a little trip, I found only two that even had them. Uh, the rest are just completely sold out all over. So it's uh, very crazy. Use your brick seat to find them. Uh, the difference between this ish reissue and the original is the color. The original is lighter on the bottom and the top is the reissue and it's got a darker color to it. But the reality of it is most people, if you're like me, you're going to keep it in the box anyway because I mean, I've mean, i got three or four of these uh, vintage ones, G1s already. But here goes the gun is even a different color. So pretty interesting stuff. Like they didn't match it exactly. And I don't know. I feel okay with it because if you're truly a G1 collector and you truly have all those G1s, you want to know that yours is a little bit specialer than the reissues. I mean, that's just kind of my thought. So I'm perfectly fine with the color variations. So we got some confirmations through some listings in the Walmart computer or system. And I really don't know 100% uh, how it's going on with that. But anyway, we have a snapdragon that is confirmed that we're going to be getting and so it looks like we're getting a snapdragon and a double dealer so those are confirmed i actually did a video about this already so you can check that out and there's a couple of other confirmations in there but the confirmations were stuff that we've already talked about in the past so yeah if you missed that video these are some new characters that are confirmed in the walmart computer and so that's the beginning of this little rumor mill but there's also more rumors coming so since then, so we're supposed to be getting an airwave toy. So it's a MicroMaster. I'm pretty sure we're going to get the whole base. Uh, my understanding is airwave is the name of the little airplane, but we should be getting the whole little base and all that to go with it and accompany it. So uh, I, I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but that's probably what's going to happen. That's probably how they're going to do it. So this is one of the first rumors or reveals that, hey, we'll probably see this at Toy Fair. Okay, and we also have rumors of getting a smoke screen. And so Earthrise smoke screen surprises me because they just did the Dodson Brothers. Looks like they may possibly, based on this rumor, be making one of these in Earthrise. And also, another rumor this week, 
is that they're finding some sort of a, another listing in the Walmart computer for an Earthrise Megatron. Now, this thing here is, of course, rumor. And yes, this is a news segment talking about rumors. I don't know if they're actually going to put the Siege Megatron in the Earthrise packaging and maybe a different paint scheme and call it the Earthrise Megatron. I just don't see how they would make another mold if it doesn't have a gun. If it doesn't turn into a gun, then what's up with this other mold? Next in the lineup of rumors is, well, they're, they're making a deluxe RC. And this one kind of baffles me a bit because I think RC is one of the better figures that they made. But my downside, my problem with this figure is the backpack on it. So curious if they could make a better one than they already did at mass retail and still hit the price point. I'm game. So let's see what they do with Earthrise. And next they have the Alicon that they're, this is a rumor of course, but wouldn't it be cool if they did? I mean, if they're already going to be making a Quinnison, it would make sense that they would make the Alicon and they would go the whole route. In fact, why didn't Hasbro just go ahead and take that whole problem off of x Transbot's hands? x Transbot's, I guess you don't have to make yours now. Just kidding. I'm interested in seeing what x Transbot's does. I think that, you know, the third party companies go a little bit uh, an extra mile, I guess you could say, compared to the Hasbro mainline. But their price is an extra mile compared to the Hasbro mainline. Bear that in mind. And this guy's supposed to be a deluxe versus the Voyager scale Quintesson that's coming. And did you say Quintesson? Yes, there's a Quintesson coming in a three pack from Cyberverse. So, I know this is not the same Quintesson that they're going to give us in the mainline for the Voyager. This is. A different one for Cyberverse. So transitioning into some Star Wars news before we get there, uh, this guy here, I, I don't know his name, I don't know much about this, but the guy is getting into Guinness Book of World Records with his Transformers collection. I don't know if it's the most toys collected, collected for the longest amount of time. I don't know what exactly it's going to be called or the information. I guess you got to buy the Guinness Book of World Records to find all the information out about it, but a uh, pretty interesting collection. What's really interesting is that he went through the time to set them all up and to uh, get in the middle of them here. So that was a lot of work. I know I wouldn't want to go that far for a couple pictures, but if those pictures get you in the Book of World Records, hey, make your mark on the world somehow, right? So it seems like a lot of stuff's going on in the Transformers community, but really nothing going on in Star Wars, right? Well, it's kind of stagnant. There's a few things going on I found that's interesting, but the main thing I see is one of two things actually people that are hating on this this uh, rise of skywalker the last movie episode nine and people that love it uh i'm sort of i enjoyed it but i haven't been back to watch it again uh, I'll, I'll probably eventually see it again it's not my star wars though so you know what my star wars is return of the jedi and the thing is that i never expected the sequel trilogy to be as good as the original trilogy. In fact, I was let down by the prequels and I have a newfound appreciation for the prequels because my kids enjoy the prequels and my kids enjoyed this sequel trilogy. And so with that, the sequel trilogy more or less is their Star Wars and my Star Wars is the original trilogy. Now, people want to point out all the loopholes or the plot holes and, and everything that's wrong with the sequel trilogy and I agree that they're not as cohesive of a series of movies as they should be but the reality of it is they they could have gone a different route. I would have liked to have seen what George Lucas would have done. It would have been awesome if we could sort of get some sort of a maybe storyboard presentation on what George Lucas's ideas were exactly on this because I know there was a little bits and pieces here and there. But in the end, it's over, it's a done deal. Let's all move on. And give us more stuff like The Mandalorian. So it's kind of strange. There hasn't been a whole lot of leaks and rumors lately about Star Wars. And usually, like with the Transformers, there's leaks everywhere. Star Wars, not so much. That's making me think we're not going to see a whole lot at this toy fair that we haven't already seen. There's nothing really going to blow our mind. Hand, they've got to have a couple things we haven't seen before, but what we are seeing is clearances everywhere. 
uh, targets you're seeing this uh, three pack uh, I'm I'm seeing really bare shelves at my target so there's really nothing to clearance so it's not a big deal there but everywhere you go there is some something getting clearanced out somewhere along the lines of Star Wars even if there's not much product so if you're collecting Star Wars I think this is the time to play some catch up I would I'm thinking about going to Entertainment Earth placing me a little order of stuff that I've missed out on while I can still get it uh, they still sell you just the figures per wave you don't have to get the fillers and back filler ones so they sell it like that but one thing that really struck me odd when I was looking at Entertainment Earth was the fact that yet again there's another reissue of wave one of the retro collection so I don't know is this gonna be a forever thing like every six months we get wave one again just keep hitting the shelves and hitting the shelves hitting the shelves it's kind of crazy it's kind of odd and I didn't really see any forward guidance on uh, the next retro collection. I guess we'll see the Empire Strikes Back figures and what they specifically are and all that. Mock-ups at Toy Fair. That's one thing I'm expecting. But hey, Star Wars, for having a big movie hit, is super light in news this week. So let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. What else happened out there that I missed? Because, you know, something happened that I missed, I'm sure. There's probably some other cool stuff coming out that I'd like to know about. And of course, like and subscribe. Talk to you, Hanger. Out.